Hello, and welcome to another lecture. Um, this time we're looking at power series again, uh, part three of section 2.3 in the book. So uh, let K be a set, any set in K, uh, generally it will be a compact set. Uh, let's define this term converges uniformly absolutely uh, for a uh, power series. So we say that a power series converges uniformly absolutely uh, in for z and k if the series with the absolute values put in converges uniformly. So it's it converges absolutely and the and the thing that's supposed to you know the the series of absolute values that converges uniformly. So <clears throat> suppose that we have uh, you know, we have such a series. So the first thing that we have to uh, we have to talk about is, is what does it mean, right? So it does mean that it converges absolutely, right? So therefore, it converges. Uh, so that's that's what we proved uh, before, right? I mean, you know, we had to, you know, just because we define a term that says converges doesn't mean that it converges, right? Um, but okay, so we proved that. Converges absolutely does mean converges, uh, so that, that we proved before. Um, and now we look at, well, uh, so, so we have conversions, so this, this, this thing over here makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so I can subtract a partial sum uh, from this um, and yeah, look at the absolute values. So I look at this, this tail of this, uh, of this series, and now I can just uh, basically do um, <clears throat> triangle inequality and I get uh, this uh, this inequality over here and uh, the right hand side over here this this thing that I bounded everything by well I said that this guy converged uniformly uh, over for Z over you know in K right that means that uh, this right hand side over here goes to zero uniformly in in z right as as m goes to infinity right well what does that mean that means that uh, this series converges uniformly right so we got uh, converges uniformly absolutely does mean converges uniformly right uh, I mean, it might seem you know uh uh, obvious, but you know, we, uh, it, it is something to prove. All right, so let's look at uh, power series and let, let's see how they converge uh, uniformly, absolutely right. So, so we know that that uh, power series converge in in some uh, in some disk, right? So let's suppose that we have a power series and it has a radius of coefficients r capital r here maybe r might be infinity um, so then if i take any little r that's less than capital r still positive um, then the power series converges uniformly absolutely in this smaller disk right and i can make that the closed smaller disk that might be more convenient here now, furthermore, um, if we take, uh, you know, if, if you let u be uh, the, the, the this, this disk of uh, conversions, right? So if, you know, either it's going to be this disk of radius r, if r is finite, if r is infinite, uh, then I'm just going to write this. It's not really a disk, right? Uh, disk of infinite radius, all of C, right, in some sense. Uh, so if U is the the set where the power series converges um, and K is any compact set, then the series converges uniformly absolutely on K. So it converges uniformly absolutely on compact subsets of uh, U. All right, so without loss of generality, uh, suppose that, that R is... Uh, finite uh, it's basically the same same proof otherwise and let uh, little r be uh, less than uh, less than capital r so now uh, 
this uh, this series. So we know already uh, this is something that we proved was that the series converges absolutely uh, in inside the radius of convergence, right? So we know that this guy uh, converges absolutely, right? So that means that uh, you know since R is less than capital R, you know I could you know just <laughs> stick in some uh, you know the right Z uh, with, with you know if I have if I take absolute values right, uh, I get conversions for you know any particular Z in particular one where Z minus P is absolute value uh, in, in absolute value R little R right. So I know that this guy over here converges. Right. Okay. So, uh, so let's let's look at uh, now z inside this closed disk over here. Right. And uh, well, I know that that uh, you know uh, this guy converges. Right. I mean, it's uh, um, we have absolute convergence. Right. Um, so, and I subtract the the initial m terms, and uh, and then I also bound the z minus p because z was in this disk, right? So z minus p in absolute value is uh, uh, is the z minus p is less than r, right? So I get this uh, this inequality over here. Now the right hand side, this guy over here, does not depend on z, right? So and it goes to zero, right? Because we know that that this guy converges, right? Therefore, uh, I get, well, I get uniform absolute convergence uh, of, of this series, right? Because this guy converges uniformly absolutely on this closed disk, right? So that's just what I said. Um, <clears throat> now, if we have a compact subset of this big disk, the big R disk, Right. Well, then there exists some little r sufficiently close to capital R, uh, so that uh, this k is also a subset of the uh, a disk of radius little r, right? And we have that um, <clears throat> the, uh, the 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 series converges uniformly absolutely on such a disk, right? So it converges uniformly absolutely on k. How do you? Know that such little r exists, right? I mean, you can, you could cover k by these disks, and it's compact. Therefore, you could take the largest uh, of, of the and you know of of the finite subcover. All right. So the result follows. So let's let's mention a couple of useful exercises about uh, um, uh, about uh, series and power series. So first one. No, we haven't really used it, but it's 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 a useful one to have. Uh, so it's called the Weierstrass n test, and you might have seen it be, uh, already before. So suppose that I have a sequence of functions um, defined on some set x. It doesn't really matter uh, what x is, um, and let's suppose that uh, these are all bounded, uh, and I have some bounds for each n. I have a bound m sub n, right, and uh, Suppose that the bounds are summable, right? So, so I can, you know, if, if I take the series of the of the bounds, uh, this is uh, this is less than infinity, right? Then the series of these functions converges uniformly, absolutely on X, right? And actually, it's it's enough to just prove uh, uniformly because you could always apply it to the absolute values, right? Uh, so. Okay, so that's one. Uh, second one, and this is again something that you've probably uh, seen before, maybe not for uh, complex uh, series, but uh, I mean, if I have two series that converge, I can add them, I'm gonna get a conversion to series and I can add term by term. So, uh, well, it still works for, uh, for uh, power series and well you can add the coefficients then right that's really adding the series term by term and you just have to sort of work out the the, the language here right and so you'll get uh, if the radius of convergence is uh, uh, at least r 
Uh, so, you know, each one of them could have different uh, radius of convergence, but both of them are at least R. Uh, then the radius of convergence of the sum is also at least R. It could actually grow. It, it, it might not be the minimum of the two, uh, but uh, it's going to be at least R, right? So, <clears throat> all right. So next time, uh, we're going to look at, we're going to define analytic functions. Uh, so all holomorphic functions will turn out to be analytic, uh, but that's something I will take a while to prove. So we're defining analytic functions, which are basically functions that have uh, a power series locally. And we're going to prove that uh, analytic functions are, in fact, holomorphic. Um, although the, the opposite direction of that will have to wait for a while, that holomorphic functions are analytic, right? So all right, so that's, uh, that's next time. So see you then.